All right, welcome everyone. Happy Friday. My name is Rylas Dana. Welcome to the Friday free webinar live stream. Hopefully it sounds okay. Let's see, let's turn it down. I hear myself over on my other screen. I'm trying a different setup today. I'm streaming through through YouTube and a different software and uh, to see if I can get better sound quality. I still don't know how to share my screen and do some of the other features that I was that I was doing with the other software, but Hopefully the sound's okay. Let me turn down the volume a little bit here, background music. Uh, thanks to Akira the Dawn for providing free or, or royalty-free music uh, via the Meaning Wave. If you guys don't know who Akira the Dawn is, check out his stream. Uh, Jordan B. Peterson, if you know who that is, um, he had a new book published, and he mentioned, mentioned Akira the Dawn. Akira the Dawn's um, added audio to several lectures from Jordan Peterson and other people like Elon Musk and and others. So that's where the music came from for the stream. So let me know how the audio is. Hopefully it sounds better. There were some complaints, some of the past streams that the audio wasn't great. And I think part of it is the software that I was using. So today, uh, I, I guess we'll just kind of um, some housekeeping items. I don't have any specific topics today other than um, some of the things I'll just emphasize some of the topics that I've talked about in the past and I want to know what you guys would like to hear more about what streams have you liked uh, what do you want to hear more of so some things that we talked about recently the the last video I did with my my flex on the thumbnail was secrets of the rich uh, concepts that are understood by the rich which is limited liability you know how to limit your liability and preserve your assets and then we also talked about the dynasty trust so we talked about um, so part of the secrets of the rich you know, ri the rich understand one limited liability how to get it number two this concept of owning things versus controlling things it's actually better to control things and not own them if you control them then you can get the benefit of that asset uh, without the risk of losing that asset if there's a liability created. So we talked about ownership versus control. And then also this concept of owning things outside of your estate. Now, again, that ownership and control, it's kind of the, it's a, kind of another way of saying that, that if you don't own things, then um, they're not subject, they can't be subject to the estate tax when you pass away. So that's what, the, that's what the Dynasty Trust does for your beneficiaries. You can set that up for your children so they receive their inheritance in a way where they can control it but not own it, and it's not going to be subject to the estate tax when they pass away. So if you're helping your parents do their estate planning or set up their plan, they should have something like that in their, in their trust for you. That is the best way to achieve asset protection is that you have someone else create it for you. Now, if you receive an inheritance from your parents and then you want to add layers of protection to those assets, it's much more difficult. The magic of the Dynasty Trust, I always talk about the magic of it, uh, the magic that allows the, the beneficiary to be the controller of it as the trustee, but not the owner, that's because someone else created it for them. So you can go back and watch more information about that, the Dynasty Trust, if you'd like information about that. Uh, other thing we've been talking about recently is a privacy trust, a way that you can own real estate and not have your name on the public record. Perfect for rental real properties. We always recommend that people own real estate, rental real estate inside of an LLC in order to limit their liability. And if they want to shield their name as the ultimate owner, a privacy trust adds, a, adds another layer as a way to do that. Uh, to make it work properly, it also requires address service. It requires using someone else's address. And Mott Legal will serve as the known address of the entity and will also serve as a statutory agent. So our office gets, gets um, is the only address recorded. It's the name of your... Uh, privacy trust, care of, Mott Legal, and our address. So no one will see your name on the record. Um, 
Other topics that I like discussing a lot is digital assets. Uh, digital assets is described under RUFADA, the Revised Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Asset Act, defines digital assets as your information that's being stored on your behalf electronically. So although it can be a confusing label and a long law um, to cite, uh, this general idea that you get to control your information that companies are storing on your behalf electronically. That's what digital assets are. That's a major part of our planning that we do as part of the Mott legal estate planning process. Our estate plans, they include uh, general access to digital assets. We give, we want that, we want the trustees and the powers of attorney to be able to get an inventory of your assets, of your real assets, you know, so we say that they can get an inventory limited to the type of account, the value of the account, who's the owner of the account, and who's the beneficiary. So that's the general power that we give over digital assets in all of our plans. Uh, allow the trustee just to have information about what the actual assets are. So the money in the bank is an actual asset. The information in the computer telling about the money in the bank is a digital asset. Uh, the other part of our digital asset planning is a digital asset trust where we give more specific requests. We make more specific um, instructions on what you want to have happen to things like your Apple iCloud account. We can copy those to your children or you could also have them deleted if you want to make sure that all those photos on your phone don't get out there. Uh, the digital asset planning allows you to also protect that information as well. Other things that we commonly name the digital asset trust are um, like if people have a Dropbox or a Google Drive or a YouTube channel, things like that, we can direct what happens to them. Now I do encourage you to use first what's called the online tool, meaning if a company provides a way for you to transfer your account, I want you to do that. An example of a good online tool is Facebook. The legacy settings in Facebook allows you to decide what happens to your Facebook account if you were to pass away. So if you set that up, that will be controlling. Now, for things that don't have a good online tool, for accounts that don't provide a clean way for you to transfer that account, that's where the digital asset trust comes in. So Google, they provide an inactive account manager. That's their version of the online tool. But that doesn't really work well for me. I don't want to name my 13-year-old son as my inactive account manager. And I really don't want to name my trustee. I have a corporate trustee named in, in my estate plan. So in my digital asset trust, I've named my, my YouTube channel. I specify that they're, they are to be copied to my children in the event of my death. So that's a way to preserve that information that I'm, that I'm letting YouTube store for me when I upload videos there, you know, family videos, even if you keep them private so they're not public, uh, so that anyone can't view them. You can upload videos to YouTube, keep them private, and then in your digital asset trust, you can designate what happens to that information, whether it gets copied, uh, deleted, or what you want to have happen. So. Uh, that's it for today. I just want to hit on those topics. Those are, um, you know, some of the some of the latest uh, stuff we're always doing. I will say we've been meeting some people in person, and it's nice. It's nice to see people in real life again. And um, yeah, so if you want to get your estate plan done, but you've been waiting until you can come in person, uh, we're doing that again. The virtual meetings are still really effective, even though we've been offering in-person meetings for a little bit now, a lot of people find that it's easier just to, to jump on a Zoom from home so they don't have to drive to our office. Uh, we do have a few offices in Arizona and one by, by appointment in, um, in Encinitas, California. Uh, but we can get started with a Zoom or started in real life if that's easier for you. Let us know. Um, I don't have, um, I don't know how to put the, the text up here, but you can give our our office a call uh, DanaLegalHelp.com that's where I practice law um, 
and then Mott Legal is where I where I um, mentor other attorneys and share some of the resources that we've created to make our law practice better. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next week. Leave some comments below if you have topics that you'd like to hear more about. Um, have a great day.